The Black Jupiter ends with me, Agents Random. Okay, so the world ends with you, right? Everyone's favorite Square Enix series that somehow manages to always keep itself just shy of the threshold of death. Case in point, this April Fools. While I was busy writing the countless wrongs of our days, Square Enix casually posted a screenshot of Shoka from Neo. As one does, I immediately translated the scene and went, Oh, I thought I had an encyclopedic knowledge of this game. I don't remember this happening. So I, uh, very calmly started messaging my good friend Marin, and after compiling the Japanese script, we determined that this scene was not from Neo. The next several minutes for us went something like this. Wait, what does this mean? Are they announcing something? Double check the files. Triple check the files. This is just for April Fools, right? Does Japan even celebrate April Fools? There's new art. Wait, are we sure it's not AI? And after 40 heart racing minutes, we did put everything together. In fact, I think we were one of the first people to work it all out, at least within the English speaking community. Honestly, it felt really satisfying. It was like playing a real mission. Turns out, this was all for a collab with the game Raynatus, a game developed by a bunch of former Square Enix employees that is very blatantly inspired from The World Ends With You and Kingdom Hearts' Verum Rex. Soon after, more info was released, and it was revealed that this was an elaborate April Fool's prank since both games are set in Shibuya. But not an April Fool's prank in the regard that it was all, haha, you thought. We wound up getting very real collab art from both Square and Raynatus developer Furyu, and the event saw Shoka and Raynatus characters saw Nishijima get into Twitter beef with one another. This was all great to see, honestly. While it was an April Fool's prank in name, new art is not something to be taken lightly. I would consider what we got to be something of real substance. But not everyone was of the same mind. Before it was clear that Twelve PR was teasing a Renatus collab, naturally people expected it to be the World Ends of You content in and of itself. Honestly, just feel lucky that it took upwards of two hours to have the rug pulled from under us this time instead of, you know, Seven full days. This has invited the typical chatter about when we'll see an actual new World Ends With You game again. I'm sure that you've heard the jokes. We'll get a new World Ends With You game in 299,792,458 years or something. Which I guess is a fine way to view things depending on your own mindset, but in conjunction with that, I tend to see a fair amount of misinformation tossed around about the franchise's development. And misinformation regarding the world ends with you is like my bat signal, so I wanted to make a video trying to set the record straight. This has been a recurring concern of mine, so if you're an avid viewer of the channel, you've likely noticed me cover a lot of this info across multiple videos over the years. But the Renatus collab gives us a lot of insight into what's going down a Square business-wise. By looking at how Square has been handling the world ends with you as a brand in comparison to other properties, we can paint a pretty good picture of what the future will look like. So is the world World Ends With You going to be oh so back before long, or are we only getting a new entry through necromancy? Let's find out. First, let's make a timeline. The World Ends With You received new entries in 2007 or 2008, depending on where you are in the world, and 2021. The franchise got a remaster and a remake in 2012 and 2018. A port was released in 2022, an anime released in 2021, and mobile spin-offs were released in 2013 and 2021. There is also manga and album releases, but I don't care to talk about those right now. This timeline shows us that we have a consistent case of new World Ends With You content cropping up every 4 to 6 years which is a far cry from the eternity that most people claim it will take for us to get a new game. But what's often thrown against Neo is that it was officially deemed a financial flop. The World Ends With You series has never been known for selling well, and many view Neo as the final shot the series had. I'm of a fairly different mindset here, since Neo is far from the only game in a series to financially fall flat on its face. I choose to view this as a recurring situation of the World Ends With You never really sells that well, and it sticks around anyway. And that's not even taking into account the fact that I still kinda call BS on Neo flopping to begin with. Like, obviously, it didn't meet Square's expectations, but Square's also practically looking for every one of their games to make more money than Fortnite, and that's not even an exaggeration. Square is notorious for wildly overestimating how much their games will make, and then making a hissy fit when their games don't meet those estimations. This has been a recurring habit of theirs for a good long while now. But what sets Neo apart from their average monthly failure is that Neo clearly didn't cost a lot to make. They didn't even pay the 10 
10 pin budget. Unfortunately, we don't have numbers available for how much Neo costs to make or how much it sold, but there is practically no way that it didn't make a profit. The game realistically cost a couple of nickels and a dime to make, and it definitely made that back and more. I am sure that comes across as a tall claim when Square themselves have practically said that it did not, but actions speak louder than words here. Something you may have noticed is that Neo is frequently on sale. I swear I see this game on sale like every other week at least. Financially speaking, sales are a form of advertisement. Games that financially fail don't tend to get a sale, they tend to get the bargain bin. A fate worse than death. Square Enix actually did this right around the time of Neo's release with Ball and Wonder World. You know, an actual failure. Comparing the way that both games are treated today, it's like night and day. Say what you will about Neo's marketing, but Square has been consistently talking about it for the past few years now. The Twitter account has stayed about as active as it could have been all these years. It'll tweet or retweet any news regarding the series on the occasion that there is, in fact, news. Whenever the world as a few devs get to talking about Neo, there's a really good chance that they, and really specifically Tetsuya Nomura, will tease future developments in the story. And a detail that you may remember from my video on why Neo itself took so long to happen is that the devs have only historically done that when they know when the next installment will be. The devs were way less optimistic following the release of the original game, and for good reason. No follow-up was even kinda in sight until years after the fact. And heck, even if Neo did actually flop, the World Ends of View franchise has a secret ace up its sleeve, and that's the World Ends of View the animation. This may come as a surprise to those out of the know, but the animation was actually pretty dang successful and enjoyed way more reruns than it should have realistically gotten. And these reruns are something that a show would only get if it was doing really well. And that's without getting into merch as well. I don't find it unfounded that a new World Ends View game could get the financial blessing on the premise of getting more source material for the anime alone. And you know, maybe a great way to get more episodes out would be to have a longer season, I'm just saying. But the core reason why we will for sure see the World Ends With You again is because the World Ends With You is ultimately a passion project. It has always been since it started out. We will continue to get games no matter what because the devs want to make them. That's the same reason we got that new acoustic album this year. That's the reason why the dev team for Reynatus chose the World Ends With You of all games to do their big cross promotion with, and why Square was also willing to go through the months-long legal hurdles it would have taken to get these IPs from different companies to cross over like that. Like gosh dang, Square Enix decorated their office top to bottom with World Ends With You merch for the anniversary several years after the last entry. These are telling signs that regardless of being called a financial disappointment, regardless of Square choosing to focus less on budget games like The World Ends With You, they still feel a need to talk about it and make large-scale business deals including it. Companies don't just do that for recreation. And probably one of the biggest reasons for this is that The World Ends With You's biggest fan under Scott the Waz, hey. you got me, <laughs> the world's biggest World Ends With You yep. fan, is Tetsuya Nomura. Dude loves this series and also just so happens to have a scary amount of influence at Square for a developer. Like, he could just greenlight games if he feels like it. As far as I can tell, the cards are stacked in favor of the World Ends With You's continued survival. Alright, so I'm oh so confident that we'll be getting another World Ends With You game again. But is this next game in the room with us? Like, when the heck is this next game supposed to be coming? Because I don't know about you, but it's already been a few years and there hasn't been a peep about a new mainline entry. Well, it's important to understand what the devs have been doing since Neo launched. Aside of Nomura doing plenty of Final Fantasy, business as usual, a substantial number of the people responsible for the World Ends With You are working on Kingdom Hearts 4. Nomura's directing, Neo's writer Akiko Ishibashi is writing, and while the composer Ishimoto isn't confirmed to be doing Cage 4 music, he'll almost for sure be working on it too. So plain and simple, we will not be getting a new World Ends With You game until Kingdom Hearts 4 is released. Same exact thing happened with Kingdom Hearts 3 and Neo. We almost got the World Ends With You sequel just before KH3 entered development, but due to other factors, that didn't end up happening and the game had to wait until after KH3's very, very, very long development. 
So the question to ask is not when the next World Ends of You game will come out, but when will Kingdom Hearts 4 come out? Odds are, as KH4's development enters its twilight hours, the more will get people working on the next World Ends of You. Let's be optimistic and say that Kingdom Hearts 4 will release late next year in 2025. Then development of the World Ends of You 3 will likely get going just after. Either we'll be getting a much more standalone entry than Neo was, taking place in Setagaya or some other untouched district of Japan, or we'll get a prequel to Neo taking place in Shinjuku. Both games have been pretty blatantly teased by the devs, but there's a lot more concrete info about what the Shinjuku game would be like. The game would likely star Neo's underutilized character, Sugumi Matsune, and would fill in a lot of the plot gaps in Neo's story, to the degree where the devs have called Sugumi's story the other half of Neo's plot. Personally, I think that I'm in the minority of people that would much rather get a full game in an entirely disconnected city than the Shinjuku story. Don't get me wrong, as a World Ends of You lore obsessionist, I would love to finally learn the Shinjuku lore, but I think at this point I'd rather see that info put in some sort of supplementary material. But new World Ends of You content is new World Ends of You content, and that's always exciting regardless of any other factors. To give the game a strong push, it will likely release in conjunction with a Neo The World Ends of You the animation. And since the last one did so well, I wouldn't be surprised to see more budget poured into this one this time, and maybe that could even extend to the game too, who knows. But the very first sign that we'll see of the World Ends of You being on its way back in the near future will likely be a series of cross-promotion between the World Ends of You and other brands. And look at that, we are already starting to see that happen right now with Renatus. Because at the end of the day, that's what this was. It's just an elaborate form of marketing for both games. Which is actually very telling. There's not really a reason to have the World Ends of You be the big game in a marketing campaign like that unless these are the early seeds being set up to keep the World Ends of You in people's minds. I would also not be surprised to see the relationship between the World Ends of You and Reynatus get taken further. Uh, let me elaborate. I mentioned how Shoka and Sari Nishijima got to talking on Twitter. Well, they were talking about how the reality energies were interfering with one another, which had the effect of putting the World Ends of You art on the Renatus website. Ignoring the fact that this does make Renatus canon to the World Ends of You multiverse, Shoka's final post had her say that the issue was fixed, but that something big could possibly be afoot. To paraphrase from a thread by Dog Emperor, this really makes it start to seem like a full-blown cross-promotion that just so happens to take advantage of April Fools. My guess is that this is a tease for some small crossover content in-game. I'm talking like you can unlock World to the music or a costume or something. When the reveal trailer for Reynatus dropped, this character was often poked fun at for clearly being based on Shoka, so it would be really funny if she actually got a Shoka costume. But this collaboration turning out to be even more wouldn't be out of the question. Like I said, both companies pulled out some pretty unusual legal stops for this and even sent press kits to Japanese publications since they were able to post some artwork from the collab early. This process would have taken months and months and months to work out and would have had to have all happened before Reynatus was even revealed. If you ask me, that's a little bit much to do just to post some crossover art on the Rickroll day. What I'm saying is that getting something like World of New characters directly crossing over into Reynatus isn't totally impossible. But also, you know, don't get your hopes up for that? It's not confirmed. Hype responsibly, kids. As for a bigger crossover, I'm also expecting to see a second swing of what has historically been the World Ends of You's best piece of promotion, Kingdom Hearts. Just like famously happened back in 2012's Dream Drop Distance, I bet that we'll be seeing some World Ends of You cross promotion show up in Kingdom Hearts 4. Maybe not necessarily to the scale of Dream Drop Distance, but one does not casually have the first game's iconic 10-4 building and not have that act as a clear sign of the world ends with you. Yes, I know that the 109 is a real building, but using the numbers 104 is very specifically a world ends with you thing. Renatus changed their version of the building to 104 as a way of signing the crossover in the world ends with you collab, so when Kingdom Hearts does it, I can't help but smell the world ends with you. Reminder that Neo did in fact actually get the license to use the numbers 109, but the devs turned it down because 104 was too iconic. And heck, this building might not even be the only world ends of you hint that we have in Quadratum. Going out of bounds in Quadratum in Kingdom Hearts 3 lets you find a poster that looks suspiciously like Neku. Oh, and just gonna throw this one out there, if that does come to pass and the world ends of you shows up in Kingdom Hearts 4, I'm gonna need all of y'all anti world ends of you fans to shut the frick up. When Neo released, a number of Kingdom Hearts fans understandably looked at it while wondering if Neo was going to have any connection to Kingdom Hearts, since the ending of the previous Kingdom Hearts game looks suspiciously world ends of you like. 
And as a result, many World Ends With You fans got really hostile towards portions of the Kingdom Hearts community and tried to aggressively prove that the World Ends With You has nothing to do with Kingdom Hearts. Heck, I'm not even guilt-free of doing just that myself. But someone being interested in the World Ends With You for any reason is a good thing. I'm very sure that some of the same people who are ready to smite any Kingdom Hearts fan that eyeballed Neo with thoughts of maybe seeing Sora, then later also complained that nobody played Neo. Someone engaging with a piece of media in a way that you don't wholeheartedly approve of is not inherently a bad thing. In this case, we should be encouraging people to play the game, not the opposite. If someone sees the next World of View and says, wow, that kinda looks like that thing in Kingdom Hearts, tell them that if they like Kingdom Hearts, then there's a good chance that they'll also enjoy the new World of View game. And if you really want to galaxy brain them, then tell them that it totally is important to Kingdom Hearts, and that they should totally pre-order the next World Ends View ASAP, or they might miss out on crucial lore. I'm mostly joking there. To recap, the next World Ends With You game will likely not take as long as Neo did to reach us, and no matter what, there will be a next game. It's a question of when, not if. And a good way to determine when is through Kingdom Hearts. These games may have different skies, but in the end, they do actually have the same destiny. And if I had to get really optimistic with all this, a new spin-off like maybe a rhythm game would fit super snugly into the period of time just before we get a new full game. Or maybe even another type of media altogether, like a tabletop RPG. Can you imagine how sick a tabletop RPG with the world as a used art style would be? This video is sponsored by Agents of Fate. Agents of Fate is the newest tabletop RPG by Fabletop Productions, where you and your friends are thrust into an action movie-like thriller that sees everyone competing to be the main character. Where the best players won't necessarily be the ones who roll the highest, but those who have the quickest wit and the dirtiest tactics. And as an agent to myself, a whole game about agents is right up my alley. At the start of each game, agents will be given a set of objectives to complete that will more often than not overlap with other players at the table. And and unlike most other games, players aren't limited to their immediate surroundings either. Agents are able to utilize the flashback system, which allows them to give themselves character items, abilities, or even affiliations from the past, which allows players to not only play the role of actors in a film, but also the directors. And as I've talked about in those Lost videos that nobody watches, I quite like flashback systems. Oh, and as I'm sure you've all noticed, the art is all based on the art from the World Into View. Drinking game, take a shot every time you look through the playbook and see a World Into View moment. And if I may speak candidly, one of the World of Zeus themes is about how we express ourselves through what we create, and I wholeheartedly support anyone that feels inspired from the World of View to go and make their own thing. If you want to help support the full release of Agents of Fates, then head over to the game's Kickstarter linked in the description. While there are standard tier rewards such as receiving digital and physical copies of the book, there are also some higher rewards that include getting your own illustrations in the World of View style added to the book. On top of which, one of the stretch goals will add an entirely new game mode that simulates the Reapers game, which Fabletop has told me that if they hit, they'll add me in as a main character. Support Agents of Fate and help me live my dreams of becoming a real agent. Please, if you don't, then no one will know what kind of agent I am, and they might think I'm like a real estate agent or something. I just can't have that. And to close things out, a thank you to our patrons, Bacon King, Kazer, Nero Jacob Kurotama, Willpower784, Wonderland Snack, The Missing Samurai, and Ven. Give me your predictions for what you think the future of the World of the View franchise will be in the comments, and I will see you next time.